You can be a full-on alchemist, just like in the show, Full Metal Alchemist in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. So let's see if we can sort out the Law of Equivalent Exchange and build Alphonse Alric. And you may wonder why I wanted to build Alphonse instead of any other character, and other than the vote that I put up on Discord, I specifically chose Al from Full Metal Alchemist, because when it comes to the race, I really wanted to build a Warforged. The Warforged lineage is from the Eberron Rising from the Last War book, and considering Al gets his soul binded to a suit of armor, I feel like a Warforged fits perfectly. This comes with a few awesome features. The first is Constructed Resilience, which gives you advantage against being poisoned, you have resistance to poison damage, you don't need to eat, drink, or breathe, you're immune to disease, and you don't need sleep and magic can't put you to sleep. It also gives you the feature Sentry's Rest, so when you take a long rest, you must spend at least six hours in an inactive, motionless state rather than sleeping. In this state, you appear inert, but it doesn't actually render you unconscious. And finally, the biggest boost you're gonna get is integrated protection. Your body has built-in defensive layers, almost like you're just made of a suit of armor, but those layers can actually be enhanced with more armor if your class allows it. This feature gives you a plus one bonus to your armor class, and wearing armor actually integrates it kind of into your body. So you have to actually spend a full hour getting in and out of armor. And as long as you're alive, your armor can't be removed from your body because the armor is your body. Then when it comes to a background, in the Full Metal Alchemist series, you're basically making these transmutation circles to do your alchemy. And those transmutation circles kind of feel like runes. So I'm gonna take the background, Rune Carver. That comes from the Bigby Presents Glory of the Giants book and it gives you skill proficiency in history and perception. And it's all about carving runes, so by default, it gives you a feat. And that feat is Rune Shaper. And Rune Shaper gives you the feature Rune Magic, which allows you to know a number of runes equal to half your proficiency bonus, rounded down. You can inscribe each rune you know onto a non-magical weapon, piece of armor, clothing, or any other object that you touch. And those runes are first level spells. You will know that spell, and if you're carrying the object with the rune on it, you can cast that spell using any spell slot you have, or you can invoke the rune that you have inscribed without expending a spell slot, but you can only use it once per long rest, basically giving you a resource of free spells. So now you can have a good solid source of spells that you might not take usually, but that can definitely be super helpful. Like Long Strider boosts your movement speed, Disguise Self in case you don't want to look like a giant suit of armor, or something like Speak with Animals if you want to completely destroy my soul. Big Brother Egg. <laughs> then when it comes to stats, we're going to keep it pretty straightforward. We're going to dump strength because dexterity is just going to be more useful to us. Then we're going to put 15 points into dexterity, constitution, and intelligence. That means we're going to dump our wisdom, which kind of makes sense because then maybe you wouldn't have been a kid trying to bring your mom back to life, and charisma is a little hard when you're just a walking suit of armor. Dumping both of those stats down to 8. With 15 points into our main stats, we also get a plus 2 bonus to our constitution from being a warforged, bringing that to 17, and then we get a plus one into whatever stat we want, so we're gonna throw that into intelligence, bringing that to 16. Because you have to remember tons of alchemy combinations, and with the law of equivalent exchange, you need to know specific elements and how much of each and all that stuff. Then it's time to choose a starting class. And you might assume, well, it's Full Metal Alchemist, we're going with an alchemist, but, uh, yeah, alchemy in D&D is very different than in Full Metal Alchemist. We're not creating a bunch of items like we would in D&D. We are transmuting one thing into another. And that is going to be more about going with a wizard. We are going to take wizard all the way from level 1 to level 20. When you take your first level in wizard, you get saving throws and intelligence and wisdom, and you get to choose two skills. So we're going to grab arcana and investigation. When you take your first level in wizard, you get spellcasting, which we'll cover all the spellcasting in just a second, and you get arcane recovery, allowing you to recover some of your spell slots on a short rest instead of waiting for a long rest. It is fairly limited though, because you can only regain a combined level equal to or less than half of your wizard level, rounded up. And none of those spell slots can be above level six. Then at second level of wizard, you get an arcane tradition, otherwise known as a subclass, and you make plenty of transmutation circles. So we're gonna take the School of Transmutation. It is all about alchemy and turning one thing into another thing. The School of Transmutation gives you Transmutation Savant. So it takes half as much time and gold to copy any transmutation spell into your spellbook. And you get the feature, 
Minor Alchemy. So you can temporarily alter the physical properties of a non-magical object, changing it from one substance to another. So you can take an object that's entirely of one type of material, like wood, stone, iron, copper, silver, whatever, and transmute it into a different one of those materials. I know it's a very simple bit of alchemy and transmutation, but you're only level two, you can't expect too much yet. I mean, you're so limited that for each 10 minutes you spend performing this procedure, you can transform just one cubic foot of material. And even after all that, one hour after you do it, you lose your concentration on it and the material reverts to its original substance. Basically, the only use for this is if you wanna try and con people, and that'd be kinda mean for Al to do. Then leveling up in wizard is actually pretty straightforward. You get a ton of spells, which we're gonna cover, and then you pretty much just get features from your subclass and some ability score improvements, at least until you get to a super high level in wizard. But when it comes to that transmutation subclass, at six level, you'll get a transmuter stone, giving anybody that holds that transmuter stone some special benefits, like dark vision out to a range of 60 feet, an increase to their movement speed by 10 feet, proficiency in constitution saving throws, which is pretty massive for any spellcaster because that helps your concentration checks. And finally, the holder of that stone can have resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage, but you only get one of these benefits at a time. However, you can change that benefit each time you cast a transmutation spell. Then at 10th level of transmutation wizard, you get shape changer. So you get the polymorph spell added to your spell book for free and you can cast polymorph without expending a spell slot. But when you do so, you can only target yourself and transform into a beast whose challenge rating is one or lower, which is kind of limiting, but can be pretty useful, especially if you need to navigate into small spaces or something. Then at 14th level of Transmutation Wizard, you get Master Transmuter. This feature allows you to destroy your transmuter stone in order to gain a single burst of power. And you can use it for four different things. The first one is major transformation, allowing you to transmute an object that is something that's no larger than a five foot cube. And you can transform that object into another non-magical object of similar size and mass and of equal or lesser value. But you have to spend 10 minutes handling the transformation. This might sound somewhat useless, but if you happen to need like a rope ladder in a situation, just throw a bunch of stuff into a pile and you can just turn it into a rope ladder, but you're gonna have to definitely get pretty creative to make this super useful. You can also use Master Transmuter for Panacea, allowing you to remove all curses, diseases, and poisons affecting a creature. And that creature will also regain all of its hit points, which is probably one of the more powerful healing abilities that you could pull off. Alternatively, you can use the feature Restore Life so you can cast Raise Dead without expending a spell slot. And then the final feature is Restore Youth, allowing you to reduce the age of someone, which seems like a very specific use case. Frankly, most of the time, you're probably just gonna be using Panacea. Then outside of your subclass, you still get five ability score improvements. I would throw two of them into Intelligence, one of them splitting to dexterity and constitution, rounding them both out and bringing them to 16 and 18 respectively. Throw one more into dexterity, boosting up your overall armor class a little bit. And then finally, make sure you grab a feat. And we don't always want to rely on that transmutation circle for all of our casting. So we're going to take the feat Warcaster. And Warcaster is one of the most helpful feats for spellcaster. Your transmuter stone can already give you proficiency in constitution saving throws, but Warcaster can give you advantage on that constitution saving throw whenever you're trying to concentrate on a spell. Additionally, Warcaster makes it so you don't need to use somatic components of a spell if your hands are occupied. And then finally, when a hostile creature's movement provokes an opportunity attack from you, you can use your reaction to cast a spell at that creature rather than making an opportunity attack. It can be any spell that has a casting time of one action and you can only target that one creature. So you can't use this to cast an AOE spell. Then there's two final features you get from being a wizard. At 18th level of wizard, you get spell mastery. So you can choose a first and second level wizard spell that are in your spell book. And you can cast those spells at their lowest level without expending a spell slot. So you can definitely just spam cast certain spells. And then at 20th level of wizard, you get signature spells. So you gain mastery over two powerful spells. You get to choose two third level wizard spells in your spell book and you always have them prepared. And they don't count against the number of spells you do have prepared. And you can cast each of them once without expending a spell slot, but you can only do that once per short or long rest. Wizards are probably the easiest to cover as far as their abilities, 
but they do have a heck of a lot of spells. So let's dive into the most important ones, but I'll have the full spell list up on my Patreon, along with the character sheet for this build, as well as all of my other builds. Then when it comes to the spells, there's actually a lot in the show when it comes to like touching one surface and then further down the surface, something more usable happens. Whether a giant hand comes out to punch your enemies or a spike or whatever. So a lot of spells we wanna make sure we grab are gonna be earth related spells. So we'll grab Cantrip, Mold Earth, and Shape Water. When it comes to first level and beyond of spells, we're gonna grab Catapult to launch things however we want and then some default stuff like mage armor and shield and you can just think of shield as the ground springing up to help block the path of anything coming at you but we're also going to want to make sure we grab maximilian's earth and grasp as if the ground itself is coming up to grab your enemies similarly we'll grab erupting earth and control water for similar effects which are all transmutation spells and just to completely decimate your world's economy grab the spell Fabricate. It's kind of like the transmutation abilities you already have, but you can get way more intense with it. And if you happen to be proficient in blacksmithing or something like that, you can take a clump of raw materials and turn it into a full-blown suit of plate armor, which are very expensive in 5th edition, so really, you're just absolutely breaking the economy. Then to spring a whole bunch of objects into action to help fight for you, you're going to want to grab animate objects. And just like another hand coming out of the earth or whatever to just punch your enemies, you're going to want to grab arcane hand, which is just Bigby's hand, but a more simplistic name. Also grab transmute rock and move earth. And then unfortunately, you're definitely going to have to grab create homunculus because whether or like it or not, you did that. Then the ninth level spell you got to grab is wish, mostly because it's going to be the best way you can recreate possessing the philosopher's stone with the overwhelming power that it has. I mean, having the spell Wish is just so insanely powerful. There's definitely a bunch of other spells I think would fit, and I'm gonna add those to the character sheet, but I don't want this video to get too insanely long. So you can also add whatever you'd like. And in the spirit of the Law of Equivalent Exchange, I'm curious to know what the most expensive or hard to find materials for a spell would be in fifth edition. Only certain materials are consumed during a spell, but sometimes you need like a rare gem of a certain worth but sometimes there's other more oddly specific materials so any that you can think of let me know in the comments if you want access to the character sheet for this build or any of my other builds feel free to check out my patreon linked in the description down below where you can be just as awesome as some of these folks but i do have some especially awesome patrons especially my player character patrons kevin Shirley, dylan meyer that funny man 57 joshua maynard Derek owen cgc 2014 af storm godzilla khan lisa martinez panda milkshake ted c andrew nobles Karka. Kitsune, Z13, Viral Narvar, Daniel Galvin, and the Dido 21. Then going above and beyond that are the Dungeon Master level patrons that I actually play D&D with, Shane Gilroy, Conman ZX, Cyber Society, Talon Starkey, Demiurge, Brayden Aldrich, Eric Wade, Salvador, Devin Happy, and Kilo Kilo. Then going above and beyond anything I ever expected is my god tier level patron, Gamestake. He helps me to an insane degree, so I want to give a very special shout out to him. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button, and I'll be here hoping you roll at least 3 nat 20s in your next D&D session. Especially if you want to be an alchemist with your soul trapped in a suit of armor and play as Alphonse Ulrich from Full Metal Alchemist in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition.